Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Ben Thomas, and I'm the creator of Athletic Live, and welcome to this first installment of Athletic Live, a webinar series where we will discuss all things live results. Just give me one second here. I want to make sure that I can, uh, you guys can see me. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, hope y'all are staying safe and finding ways to keep busy in this crazy time. Uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Uh, even though I'm sure everyone's mind is pretty far from live results right now, um, we need to get our track meets back first. <laughs> but our, our sports will come back and when they do, we hope that these uh, webinars that we're starting today that will continue over the next few weeks on Wednesday nights at this same time will be good documentation for the future. Uh, if you have any questions uh, during the webinar, please feel free to use the Q&A button on your Zoom. Uh, two gentlemen, uh, Dan Bedoin and Graham Dudick of Athletic Timing, will, will be more than happy and very able to answer any of your questions. So that being said, let's jump right in. So we are going to cover three topics today. Uh, this is really meant to be uh, to, to show the basics of athletic lives. So what you need to do from the, the simplest perspective to get a meet going and do some live results. So we'll go over creating a meet on athletic live. We'll talk about all the options that you have when you create your meet. Um, a, a lot of those options you'll use every meet. Some you may only use once in a blue moon um, because there's some advanced stuff that maybe you need for a district or a region meet, but not for a tri meet or a, or, or a simple invitational. Uh, once we create that meet, we'll upload our live results from high tech. So we'll show if we've got a, just a sample high tech meet created. Uh, we'll, we'll configure high tech to send results to Athletic Live uh, and, and sessions and schedules, entries. Uh, really, any data that's in high tech can get up to Athletic Live. We'll take a look at that. And then once we do that, we'll close with uh, showing you how to upload real time results from finish links. So uh, it's not just about showing final results when they're done, it's about when you're in the middle of a 10 heat event, how can someone see the results for the first four heats that you timed while also looking at the fifth heat that's on the track right now? Um, so some requirements, uh, if you were to emulate uh, and copy what we're doing in this video, uh, for high tech, we support the last two versions, that'd be 5.0 and 6.0. Uh, and our demo today does require the network plugin. Uh, we do have a way, if you don't have the network plugin for high tech, that you can upload results to Athletic Live as well, but we won't be covering that in this webinar today. And with finish links, we also support the, the current and the last version. So if you have a 9.0 or greater, you'll be all right. And uh, with finish links, we do require the NCP plugin uh, or Netcom plugin, as it's also known, uh, that allows finish links to just send data to external sources. And in our case, you'd be sending data to Athletic Live. So with that being said, let's jump right in. So uh, give me one second here to reorient my screen. All right, so um, and uh, this webinar will be recorded and it'll be available tomorrow. So um, if I'm going through anything too fast or you wanna take a look at it again, um, tomorrow we'll have this posted online for you. So first things first, we need to get to uh, the Athletic Live Administration section. So in order to do that, we go to admin, Dot athletic dot live. When I click on that, it's going to ask me to log in with my athletic.net credentials. So you don't need to create a new login. You just log in with the login that you already have with athletic.net. So I'll go ahead and do that here real quick. And once I do that, it's going to shoot me back over to the athletic live administration section. Uh, so if you haven't seen the screen before, um, on the left hand side here, we've just got a few different links, uh, mainly. Uh, to see your meets or to create a new meet, a couple other advanced things we'll go over in a future webinar. Um, but for today, we're really looking to go over the basics. So we're going to go over how to create a meet. So I'll go ahead and click that button right here. And you'll notice on the side of my screen, so at the left side of my screen here, I've got the Athletic Live Administration section. On the right side of my screen, I have a, a former Athletic Live meet. Um, so as I fill these fields out here in the Athletic Live Admin section, excuse me, I can uh, point to 
what what they will actually be on uh, an actual meet that someone would see. So, uh, for example, we'll start out with our meet details. Uh, we have a meet name and an abbreviated meet name. Um, some meet names can be very long. They could have a sponsor at the front, sponsor at the back. They could, uh, or maybe multiple sponsors. So it could be a long name. On a mobile device, that's not so nice. That might uh, spill over into two lines and not look so great. So um, you can enter the meet name as it needs to be shown. And that'll, that'll be shown uh, if someone were to go to live.athletic.net and see the front end or see the actual uh, meet list, you see that name there. Um, but when they come in on a mobile device, um, they'll see this short name. So we'll just go ahead because this is already a pretty short name. We'll go ahead and copy it and put it right there. Uh, next, we'll choose our sport. In our case, we'll do outdoor track, um, select a site. So uh, for most folks, this will just be Athletic Live, but we do offer a package if you do uh, over 25 meets in a particular year. So over cross country and track where we can do a white labeled version of Athletic Live where you can have your logo uh, on every page. Um, you'd be able to select that right here. But for our case, once again, keeping it nice and simple, we'll select Athletic Live. Uh, it's an outdoor track, so it's gonna be 400 meters. Uh, for our meet dates, uh, we've got a date picker here. I'm just gonna set this to next May, and we'll do a two-day meet, May 1st through 2nd. So I've got my May 1st right here. You can add as many dates as you want. So, um, a lot of times it'll be district meets or you know, once you get further in the postseason where maybe you've got a Tuesday and a Thursday meet. Uh, you could set this, you could add any dates in any order that you want. But in our case, we're just going to do a two day consecutive meet. So we'll say uh, May 2nd here. And uh, we're in Eastern time. I'm in Maryland, so I'll just keep it to Eastern time. Uh, can check to publish this meet. So uh, there may be a use case where you want to create a meet ahead of time but not actually show it on Athletic Live. You can keep that unchecked. Uh, in our case, we'll go ahead and check that. And for a location, I will go ahead and just put my old high school. So we'll go Reservoir High School there. And um, of course, we've got our meet details all set. So once we enter these details in, we go to the next step of the meet creation process, which is to connect this meet with athletic.net. Uh, this is not required. And uh, you can use any entry system that you want to create your meets in high tech and then send that data up to uh, Athletic Live. Uh, we never plan and never intend to limit that. But if you do happen to use athletic.net uh, for entries and, you, and your meet is on athletic.net, there are a couple cool features that you can take advantage of. Um, in this case, I have already created this shared an invite on athletic.net. So because, uh, because I entered the date, the sport, and the location, uh, the system will check athletic.net to see if there are any matching meets with those criteria. And that's, in this case, this is the one that I created. So I can go ahead and select it. If it wasn't there, uh, you could have the opportunity, you certainly could match it up in other ways. And we've got a little help doc right here where you can learn how to manually do that. Um, but for the purposes of this webinar, we'll just keep it simple and I'll go ahead and select the share and invite. And in this case, we will do entries via athletic.net. Um, so the couple bonuses that you get when you do athletic.net entries in an athletic live meet, uh, one, we can grab team logos. So on all entries and results, you'll see logos next to those team names. Um, we can also grab athlete uh, personal records and season records. So uh, when results go up for a 1600 or an 800 or 100 or whatever it may be, we look at that athletic.net database, see what that person's record is, and if they beat it, we can display PR next to the results there. So, you know, not not uh, not deal breakers by any sense of the imagination, but a lot of what we've tried to do with Athletic Live is just little by little add cool new features that people will appreciate. So we've got our details. Uh, we've connected this meet with athletic.net. Now we need to decide the features that we want in this meet. Um, and we define those features by meet credits. You have a, a meet credit that offers you certain kinds of functionality. Um, in our case, uh, we've already got a professional meet credit, but uh, if we didn't have one, uh, we could purchase a credit. And uh, I'll briefly talk about what these are. These prices are just for if you were to do one meet. Um, if you do anywhere over five meets in a season, we have some pretty aggressive bulk pricing and that gets better the more meets you do. Um, so the two main meet types we have are the standard meet, which allows you to upload any data from your meet management system, which 
today will be high tech, but we also support Meet Pro for track and field. And in cross country, we do support race director and run score as well. For the professional meets, you get everything in the standard meet, so you can upload all your data from high tech. Um, then you also get uh, a scoreboard, which we'll look at today, which will be that mobile scoreboard that comes from finish links. And you also get text, email, and Twitter notifications. So uh, a parent can sign up to receive a notification whenever an athlete gets, whenever an athlete finishes an event, and uh, they'll get a text or an email or a tweet to their Twitter account whenever that happens. So since we've already got a professional meet, and I should mention that we do also offer free meets as well. Um, it's a standard meet functionality and it's for one to three teams and up to 200 athletes. So, um, you know, if there's a smaller meet that you're doing and you know, maybe you're not getting paid a lot for it or it just doesn't make sense to offer live results, we wanna make sure that even those kids there at those small meets can get live results as well. So I'll go ahead and just hit this cancel and select an existing meet credit. And once I select this credit, um, because we know it's a professional meet, we'll then get the opportunity to decide which scoreboard and meet management system uh, systems that we're using. So in our case, uh, this is just asking us what will we be using to do uh, real-time results with our track scoreboard. In our case, we'll select finish links. We do also support uh, eagle eye and flash timing as well. Um, in this demo today, we'll just stick to finish links, but um, we'll get to eagle eye and flash timing in a, in a later webinar. So click on finish links. And this is just gonna give us a couple different options um, that we can choose to use or not. And I'll briefly explain these. So this first checkbox says, do you want to show compiled and heat by heat results from finish links? So uh, when you upload live results from finish links, you don't just see, or you, with this option checked, you don't just see what's in finish links at any given time. You also can see compiled results. So if you're on heat 10 of 20 in a 100 meter dash, uh, you can and you can see heat 10, uh, the entries for heat 10, and then as you click in finish links, you can uh, see those results pop up. Uh, and then in heats one through nine, you can see the compiled times that have already been aggregated from finish links. So we're essentially, as you click in finish links, we're storing that data on our end and displaying it in a compiled list. So at any point during an event, you can see the live results that are happening that, that have happened but haven't been finalized yet. So we'll go ahead and check that today. Um, in our case, I've got no uh, wind gauge set up in my house, so I'll go ahead and keep this unchecked. Um, for live running time, uh, in almost all cases, this would be the same system that you're using for results. So we'll click finish links. We also support Eagle Eye for running time too and flash timing very soon. Uh, for FTP results upload, so this, this uh, our meet management system uploads data via FTP. Um, so we'll just go ahead and select high tech. Like I said, we do support Meet Pro as well. Um, and this just just a checkbox right here. If you happen to use high tech alternate numbers, uh, it's a pretty rare setting. One of those things that you're not going to use or that most folks don't use. Um, it, it helps with some session reordering. If anybody's curious about that, uh, the guy to ask is Dan because he uses this all the time. Uh, but we'll keep this off for now because it, it is a fairly rare setting and most timers uh, don't use it. All right, to divisions. So in our high tech meet, uh, we do have two divisions. It is important in Athletic Live that if you have divisions, you enter them in. Uh, it helps us with uploaded data to make sure that we're separating by division. Uh, in our case, I'll just go ahead and open up my high tech meet here real quick. Take a look at my setup and my divisions. See, so we've got two divisions, a varsity and a junior varsity. So I'll just go ahead and enter these into Athletic Live. Nice here. Click to add another one. And in our case, we are not doing a, a division by team meet. Um, if you were in high tech uh, and you're in your uh, meet setup, so we're just doing a division by event meet. If you were doing a division by team meet here, you would check that box in Athletic Live. It's a fairly rare setting. Um, your, a division by team meet would be, let's say you've got division A and division B, they're running in the same race. So you've got a 1600 meter run with 10 guys from A, 10 guys from B, but you wanna score them separately, you'd do a division by team race. And because of how, the, how things are aggregated in high tech, uh, we, we need to know that if you're doing live results. So just something to keep in mind if you do ever run into that situation, we're not doing that today. Uh, so for the timer name, um, the timer name, 
will appear at the bottom of every page. So in this case, it's Anne Arundel County. In our case, we'll just do example timing. No URL, but if there was a URL, uh, this would link out to that particular URL. And if there's a license, if you want to license, the, say that the, the results are licensed to a particular company or person, you can enter that right here. I'll go ahead and leave it blank for uh, this example. And if there are questions, uh, those, that, those questions for that, that name and email, they'll also appear at the bottom of every page. Um, that's good to do so folks know who to talk to if they've seen the issues with the live results. So I'll just put my name and my email. All right, uh, scoring. So uh, th there could be use cases where you don't wanna show any scores, maybe the meat's just not being scored, or you don't want to show scores for some reason. Maybe you've got some super overzealous coaches that are gonna come to you and give you some issues. Um, but in most cases, if you're doing scores, we, like to, uh, we recommend that you show them. So in our case, we are showing live scores. Uh, we are separating scores by gender. So there'll be female and male scores. And in our case, we are going to show scores by division as well. Um, if this wasn't checked, then even in high tech, if you had scores for varsity and junior varsity, they would not show separately. Check in this box, make sure that shows separately. Updates, we have two check boxes. Uh, and these check boxes are to display uh, new result updates and existing result updates. So if we look at this uh, previous meet over here, we'll see that there are five updates under this recent updates heading. So whenever you upload anything from high tech, if this box is checked, or the, or the first time you upload results from high tech, if that box is checked, uh, we will see uh, that, the, that, that an update appears right here in this list. Um, and if this existing results updates is checked, then a result can be updated. So it looks like uh, these four are first time uploads and this girl's 400 meter dash was uploaded, uh, looks like it was changed for some reason and re-updated. So it's a nice little dashlet right here. So folks can be on the homepage of a meet and uh, at any point they can know what the latest uploads are. For social media, um, we'll dig into this in a later webinar, but uh, you do have the option to do automated result tweets whenever you upload results. Uh, and this just allows you to add a hashtag for that. So in our case, we'll just say, put a hashtag for our uh, example company and our meet. For static links, uh, maybe you wanna add a link to uh, an, an HTML set of meet programs. Maybe you wanna link out to the official results. In our case, that's what we'll go ahead and do. I'm just gonna copy and actually, what, I, what I'm going to do is copy a link to the athletic.net meet, which will have the official results. So I click that plus button and I can add a URL. This is just the URL to uh, the athletic.net meet that relates to this athletic live meet and uh, link text, which say official results. And these static links are going to appear in this set of links on the home page and in this set of links in the menu. So when we create our meet, we'll see that official results link there. All right, so uh, next thing is statistics. So uh, I mentioned that if you use athletic.net for entries, you don't have to, but if you do, um, you can take advantage of these, uh, of these statistics where we show personal records and season records uh, whenever new results come in. And these check boxes just allow me to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that. And the last check box here is show qualifiers on live results. So uh, what I mentioned before, when we have the compiled results from finished links, uh, we can, uh, we can if, if you're on heat 10, you can see heats one through nine on the list. Uh, if you happen to be doing prelims, then uh, we can calculate who is, who is qualifying, uh, who's currently in qualifying position and what time someone would need to run to get into qualifying position. Um, we'll go ahead and check this. Uh, we'll, uh, we probably won't see this today, but this will be covered in more depth um, in an advanced webinar in a, in a couple weeks. And same thing here for protest management. Um, this, if, 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 this is useful for maybe a very large invitational or a region state meet where there is an official protest process. Uh, say it's, you know, there's a 60 minute protest period. You wanna communicate that online. And if there actually is a protest for uh, any particular event, you can mark that online. So that way folks know um, what the protest process is or how long, how long uh, 
you have left to make a protest and if an event is in protest. Um, so just a way to help communicate a little better for large meets um, if there's a protest for anything. And we'll cover that in a, we'll cover that in more depth in a future webinar. Um, so getting towards the end of this form here and the end of creating this meet, um, just a few settings uh, that can sometimes be on, sometimes be off. Um, show event start times. So in high tech, and I'll just go into high tech real quick. If you create sessions for your events, you can set them to given times. Now, if you don't, if, if you create a session but don't set times, uh, these will typically default to whatever the start time for the meet is. So all of these would say 1 p.m. Uh, and maybe maybe you have reasons for not adding times into high tech. Maybe it's a rolling meet and you don't want to give anybody any kind of, excuse me, anticipation of when an event might be. Uh, and you don't want to fill those out. Just uh, uncheck that here. Uh, for today, we'll keep that checked since we've entered the times into high tech. Next checkbox is show raw results. So even though we've got mobile results here, uh, maybe you want to show someone or you still want people to be able to access the raw high tech results um, and those would be available in the tab right here um, you can check that uh, i'll go ahead and check that so i can show you what it looks like uh, if someone is live streaming your meet uh, you can add the link here you could also add the link in uh, the static link section but we added it down here because um, uh, a lot of is, there are lots of meets that do live streaming and instead of having to create a new static link and add a title. Um, we just allow people to add the link right here. So I'll go ahead and set this to just a previous meet that was done on RunnerSpace. And this link, like other static links, will appear right in here. So when we create this meet, we'll see that link appears here. Uh, this one, uh, kind of obscure, but if you're doing combined events, um, or I guess I should mention too that uh, if you're doing sessions, and we'll see this once we upload uh, from high tech into this meet, if you're, if you're doing sessions, you can sort by session. And uh, if you have combined events, you can also sort by combined event. But if you have a session that is only combined events, then there can be duplicates, so it can look kind of weird. You've got a heptathlon session, but also a heptathlon. So if you do that, you can just uncheck this and it will only show the session in there. I'll keep this checked, it doesn't really matter for our meet today because we're not gonna be doing combined events. And now we're on to our last field here, which is the meet logo. So uh, you can upload a meet logo and it will appear on the home page right underneath this uh, event bar and recent updates. So I'll just go ahead, click, uh, let me find a good logo here. Sure, we'll do the Athletic Live black logo, cool. So we got everything done and we'll go ahead and click save meet. Once we click Save Meet, it'll take a second or two to create everything. And then we go to our Admin Meet Detail page. So I'll just touch on a couple things here um, so we can see that we have our, this is the shared and meet that we created. Um, we've got some actions here, which I'll touch on a few of these here in just a minute. Um, and then some details and just some data that we have that uh, just shows what we've checked in, in the uh, creation form. We our details, we can see we've linked this athletic.net meet, um, see the divisions we've created, and so on. Uh, a couple buttons here that you'll probably use on a regular basis, um, this edit button right here. So if you need to edit, meet, edit your meet for any reason, maybe the dates change, the name changes, click on the edit button, and that'll bring you to a form that looks just like the one we were on, and you can change anything in here you want. In our case, we've already entered everything correctly, so I'll just hit the back button. Uh, reset meet. So there can sometimes be cases where you upload data from high tech and maybe some events change. Um, if, if you do upload again from high tech, so say like some entries change, it's fine. You can just upload again from high tech and it'll overwrite. But maybe some events have been deleted or just something's happened with the meet that makes it very different from what you had previously uploaded from high tech. You can click that reset meet button and it's going to take out all the teams, entries, results, events everything you've already uploaded. So it just gives you a clean slate. If you're creating multiple meets at a time that are fairly similar, you can click this clone meet button and this will bring you to a form that looks very similar to the create meet form, but it's already pre-populated with just about everything that you had added 
or just about everything that existed in that meet. The only thing you need to add in is the date. And of course, you probably want to change the name too, unless you're creating a meet for next year. Uh, we will not clone a meet today, so I'll just click the back button. And uh, if you ever have to cancel a meet, we all learned about that the hard way here um, a month or so ago. Hopefully this button won't get as many pushes as it's had. Um, but if you do need to cancel a meet, you can just click this button and it's gonna allow you to enter a cancellation message, uh, unpublish the meet, and then uh, it'll just take care of some cancel. So it'll add canceled into the title uh, and just let folks know that the meet's not gonna happen. And uh, we'll take a look at this upload teams thing here in a minute when we get into high tech. Um, and you can see here that there's a note. And if there are any notes, anything, if there's anything uh, wrong with the meet, um, there will be a note here that'll tell you that maybe you need to take care of something. Um, in this case, it's telling us that teams have not been uploaded. Uh, one thing you have to, you, you, you don't have to do it, but you really should do it before you upload any data from high tech or finish links is to upload the team list from high tech, which we'll take a look at in a minute. That just ensures that we have all the team names right. Um, in high tech, you can have short and long names. Uh, so if I go to high tech and go to schools, sometimes uh, these short and long names can be fairly similar or uh, can collide in some way and it can cause some weird issues. So uh, just a quick way to deal with that is to, um, Actually, we can go ahead and do it right now. We, so, so to uh, export those teams from high tech, and this is really the, the next piece of this whole thing. Um, so we've created our meet here, and then uh, we're gonna start uploading data from high tech. So the first, and like I said, the first thing we need to do is, is uh, upload those teams. So uh, from the main page in high tech here, I'm gonna click on schools, then click export to HTML. I'm gonna export it to my Z drive, because that's where I have only meet data. Uh, just say team list two, hit okay. Cool, that's created. Uh, now I will go back into Athletic Live here and click upload teams. I will select that file that I exported from high tech. Which is gonna be in my Z drive. Cool. Make sure I put in the right one there. All right, so team list, city drive. Cool. Okay, there's my team list too. Got it. Knew it was in the wrong place. <laughs> All right, so I hit upload file, and it lets us know that our, our teams have been successfully uploaded to the meet. All right, so we've got our meet created, we've got our teams uploaded. Now we need to start uploading some data from high tech. So um, the term we use to describe uploading data from various meet management or FAT systems is upload protocols. So we're gonna have upload protocols that allow us to upload from high tech and finish links. And in our case, this meet is set in the far future. And we typically will automatically turn these on about three days before the meet and turn them off the day after the meet. Uh, so in our case, we do need to turn them on. So we'll click turn them on. And uh, I'll go ahead and refresh. And now we will see some upload protocols here. Uh, typically, you will not need to manually turn them on unless you're trying to uh, upload data well before the start of a meet. So um, we've got a help doc right here at our, uh, at our help documentation, which is at help.athletic.live. And uh, we'll go ahead and follow this documentation here to get high tech set up to send data to Athletic Live. So I'm just going to uh, open this up in a new window here. And we'll go into high tech and start uploading some data. All right. So the first thing we need to do here, cool, we've got high tech, we've got network plugin, we've got an internet connection. Awesome. So first thing we need to do is enter our credentials. So in high tech, we're gonna click run, then web. We're gonna click the login tab, and we're gonna enter the credentials that we have here on Athletic Live. So for every meet, the, or the, the host will always be the same, but for every meet, the username and the password will be different. That's how we know the data that's being uploaded is coming from a particular meet and going to a particular meet on Athletic Live. So I'll go ahead, copy this username, Go into high tech here, go to run, 
web login, copy that in. Fortunately, as I'm sure most of you know, you can't copy a password into here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the shared and meet. Z, J, R, N, A, B, 6, T. Cool, so if everything's good. Uh, it will say connection to site successful and note that that working directory is to forward slash. Um, that'll always stay the same, that'll never change. So the, the host here, working directory will never change, but the username and password will. All right, so um, before we do any uploading, there's a couple other things we wanna to check to make sure are set correctly. Um, so in our settings, uh, which, which is right here, we wanna make sure that we're on passive FTP, that our event sort is session, and that include session title if sort by session is checked. So if I go to my settings, you can see we're on passive FTP, we have a session sort, and we've got this button checked. So we're good to go there. And last but not least, I wanna take a look at our preferences here. Uh, to do that, we go to, we're in the run screen, we go to preferences, web real time, and uh, you can check or uncheck anything here that you want. The only thing I recommend not checking is all prior round results. Um, that for the most part, that's fine. But if you're doing something like a division by team meet or doing, some, doing anything that's kind of off, um, these can sometimes cause problems when they get uploaded. So I just always recommend to keep it off. Um, so cool, so if we have any records or time standards or comments or no shows or field series or entry times, all that good stuff, all that, all that good data that exists in high tech that we want to get out to folks, uh, we can upload all that. So we have everything configured now. So let's go ahead and start uploading some data to Athletic Live. So the first couple things we're gonna upload, uh, we wanna upload our schedule. So you saw we had two sessions. Uh, I can show you just, uh, just a quick refresh right here. We have two sessions, one for fields, uh, one for running. And for running, our, our varsity events are seated. So we have heat sheets for those. Uh, for junior varsity, they are unseated, so we don't. It's just gonna upload some performance lists uh, when we do upload heat sheets. So to upload a schedule, we'll go to web, go to log in, click upload event schedule, and uh, we'll go back to our athletic live admin here and click this go to meet button. That's gonna bring us to the actual meet where people can see data. So we can see here that we've st we're starting to get some events coming in in our top events bar right here. And we can see that we've got our sessions available here. And actually I'm gonna bring this over into a different, I'm gonna bring this over right here so we can see what it looks like on mobile because, uh, so over four years of doing this, about 90% of traffic's on mobile. So uh, the, the desktop view can look good, but no one's gonna see it in this view. So <laughs> we wanna take a look at it in the mobile view. Um, so a couple things to note here that tab there. So our meet logo that we uploaded, it's showing up. Uh, we have our official results link and our watch live link. And uh, if we go take a look at the menu here, we can see that we have our two sessions. So if I click on running, um, we're going to see, uh, we're going to see that running session. Uh, I can use the filter here to change over to fields, uh, filter by division if I want to, filter down by event category. Um, in our case, we'll just go ahead and reset and um, we'll take a look at all of the events here. And you'll notice that regardless of where I am on the site, so I can go into the boys 100 dash, uh, you can always access events from this top bar and filter events in the top bar as well. So we upload our schedule. Uh, next thing that we need to do is upload our events. So we'll go back into high tech here, or excuse me, upload our uh, entries and heat sheets. So we'll click on this uh, upload heat sheets performance list for rounds not done. And we'll go ahead and do it for all sessions. Click OK. Uh, no thanks. You'll note that I did not click this upload default result pages. Uh, this is not needed for Athletic Live, so you never need to check it. So if we go back to Athletic Live here, we will see, if I go to the events page, uh, that some of these are starting to come in here. So it happens pretty quick. Um, we see here that uh, this changed from schedule to flights because now we have our, our flights up for discus throw. If I click on this, you can see our flights. 
So we've got two flights here, 10 each. Um, in our case, there were no seat times. Uh, there were seat times. You can see the seat times here where it says ND. And then if you click on entries, you can just see raw entries. Um, so able to see both. Sometimes it's good to see just entries. Sometimes you want to take a look at flight sheets. And we can see here in the top bar that it looks like our running events are starting to come in. Um, our boys 100 varsity. We're seeing our heat sheets here. We can also take a look at entries if we want. Let's head back to our events page. Uh, and we'll notice here that I had mentioned varsity has heat sheets, junior varsity just has performance lists. Um, the statuses are slightly different. So uh, we're seeing that we only have entries for this girls 100 dash junior varsity, but we have heat sheets for this boys 100 dash junior varsity. Now, uh, last thing on this screen, if uh, for some reason you wanted to upload all results at once, you could. Um, this is something you might generally do at the end of a meet, just to make sure you got everything up there. Uh, in our case, we've just got one uh, result right now, which is, if I go to my all events, with this girls pole vault varsity that's done. So I will go ahead and just upload results for completed rounds. This is gonna upload that girls pole vault for me. I go back here. We'll see, let's go to our field session. See if this got changed to results, no longer flights, it's results. And if I go here, I can see the results. Uh, and if I want, it looks like field series were entered in here too. So I could take a look at the field series also. All right, so uh, we've uploaded the schedule, uploaded heat sheets. We've got uh, just a sample event of results up. Now the bulk of what uh, you'll be doing in high tech is either uploading heat by heat results or uploading completed results. So we'll take a quick look at both of those here. So uh, if you weren't using finish links, but still wanted to provide uh, results a little faster than just at the end of an event, you can upload heat by heat results and we'll show those uh, compiled as they come in. So let's take this girl's 100 meter dash varsity as an example. I'll just enter in some sample times here. And I'm gonna push the F11 button on my keyboard. And you can tell that it's working when this black text right here changes to red. So I'm just gonna click F11. See that changed very quickly. It said sending heat to web. Now it's back to black. If I go to Athletic Live and take a look at our girls 100 meter dash varsity. Check right in here. We can see that the girls 100 meter dash varsity status is now changed to in progress. If I click on this, uh, we'll see that we've got compiled results for heat one. Uh, we could take a look at by heat if we want, but not super useful for a single heat. Uh, and then if I go to heat two, uh, enter in some more. And upload that heat. We'll see here very shortly that heat two's results are going to show up as well. So it just happened right there. We see that that person from heat two, they're now in first place. Uh, looks like everybody from heat two uh, is leading. And now that I'm done with that event, I can score it and I can hit, it's gonna give me this here. And uh, for, I would say 90% of what you'll be doing in high tech is hitting the F12 button. That's going to upload completed results. So I'll hit the F12 button and it's gonna say sending event results to web. And if we get back here, We'll see here very shortly that this live results tab will be replaced with a results tab. And we've got a little notification to say here that final results are now available and you're seeing them. And these final results, we can see points uh, attached to each person here. If I click this little button here, uh, we can get a little more info. Not super useful for this 100 meter dash, but um, you know, if you're dealing with a 1600 meter run and you've got splits, you could come in here to see the splits. All right, so that pretty much covers what you're going to be doing uh, in high tech with Athletic Live. It's all about entering those credentials here, uh, uploading your data, and then as results are being brought into high tech, clicking either that F11 button for heat by heat results or that F12 button for final results to send data up to Athletic Live. 
So for our uh, third and final piece today, we're going to look at the, the last basic that there is when you're using Athletic Live, and that's integrating finish links. So I'll go ahead here, and in high tech, I'm just going to go ahead, uh, send, uh, first of all, I'm going to make sure that my Z drive is pointing in the right place, because I don't think that it is. So just give me one second here to fix that. Okay, so now we should be pointing to the right place. So when I update my start list, we're sending to Z drive, we're gonna send my running data, click okay. And hopefully that makes it here. Cool, yep, I'm seeing it now. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and head into finish links. So uh, in finish links here, I've got my camera and what we need to do is set up some scoreboards to send data into uh, Athletic Live. So to get the directions for that, let's head back to our meet and we'll see here that underneath our high tech upload credentials, we've got two other sets of credentials uh, for finish links results and for finish links running time. Uh, and we've got help docs here that'll help us get our finish links set up to send results to Athletic Live and one to send running time to Athletic Live. So we'll go ahead and start with the results uh, and the running time is pretty similar. So we'll go ahead and open this up. Cool. And all this, all these docs are, are the, all this documentation is available on our help website at help.athletic.live. So we just got a couple things to do here. Um, the only requirements are that you have finish links and have the finish links NCP plugin, which we do for this demo. When you are in finish links, I want to click scoreboard, then options, and click to add a new scoreboard. Uh, you will need a LSS file, which you can download right here. Uh, I've already got it on my, on my computer, so I'm not going to download it again, but you can click it here. Um, and you want to set your scoreboard up to look like this scoreboard right here. So uh, we'll start with setting our name to a live results. Uh, we're going to choose that TMIO v2 LSS script, set serial port to network connect. Uh, the, we're going to set our IP address to whatever is shown in Athletic Live, which is this 45.55.102.238 address. Uh, this is going to be the same, it'll, it'll most likely be the same for every meet that you do. Um, so we can leave that as is. The port is going to change every meet. So I'll go ahead and copy this port. Uh, this is for our results scoreboard, copied into here. Um, then we're going to set running time to off. We're going to set results to auto. We're going to check always send place, which you see here is in this options menu. We're going to uncheck paging. Uh, so for a lot of physical scoreboards, you can only show a certain number of results at any time. On the Athletic Live scoreboard, you want to show all the results that you have. So we want to uncheck paging. So no matter if you've got you know, 50 people in a 50K, we want all those guys to show up uh, on Athletic Live. So we uncheck this. And then uh, we check include first name. We can see here that the scoreboard's uh, set to not loaded. Um, so in order for this to show up as loaded, we will or it show up as running, we'll have to restart finish links. But before we do, we've got a couple other settings to check. So this is all set to go here. I'm gonna click OK, go a little further down here, and um, show you how to edit a hidden setting here in Finish Links. So uh, by default, Finish Links only sends four kilobytes of data in a single message, which is fine for, I'd say it's fine most of the time, but if you're doing any kind of splits or you've got say more than like 30 people in an event, um, 4K is not enough for a single message. So we wanna set this value uh, to the highest possible level. So in order to do that, we have to go into Finish Links Hidden Settings, click File, Control and Shift Options, click the plus next to Scoreboards, click on Port Buffer, make sure it's set to that max number of 32768, click OK, 
and uh, we need to restart finish links. But before we do, we've got one more quick thing to do. Um, there's a pretty rare issue that um, if you're delta time, so basically the time between results is set in an odd way, it can cause problems with results. So we just want to go ahead and make sure that's uh, set for Athletic Live. And in, in you know, four or five years of doing this, I haven't heard of anybody needing to have this different. Um, if that was the case, we, we certainly would figure out a way around it. But in order to get this set the right way, um, and I believe that mo I believe finish links defaults to this setting. So unless you've specifically changed it, it probably won't be an issue for you. But it's a good thing to check, and it alleviates you running into any headaches when you're trying to set this up yourself. So we'll close our scoreboards here. We'll click the plus next to event. Click the plus next to results. Click the plus next to delta. We're deep in here. <laughs> and click the plus next to defaults. And we want to click on from. Make sure it's set to zero, which is the default. Great. Click OK. Uh, now we'll go ahead and restart finish link. So I'll close. We started here. If I go to my scoreboard, scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see that now this is marked as running, so we're all set to go. But before, we, uh, before we're all done with this and ready to start showing some live results on the screen, we want to add our running time scoreboard also. So if we go back in here to the Athletic Live Admin, um, we're just going to go ahead and add a scoreboard. We'll go ahead and um, I'm just going to copy this, put it into this window, and we'll go ahead and add this scoreboard. So uh, let's go back to finish links and create a new scoreboard. The same thing here are requirements. We only need finish links in the NCP plugin. Uh, there is an LSS file you need to download. Uh, we've already got already got that on my computer, so I'm not going to download it, but you could click here to download it. Uh, we're going to set this name to a live runtime, change this to TMIO runtime. We're going to set the serial port to network UDP. We're going to set this port to 17645. Make sure that running time is set to normal and that results is set to off. And we also want to make sure that in options here that send a result if armed is unchecked, which it is. Great. Uh, cool. And then we're all set to go here. So we just need to make sure we want to make sure that send results if armed is checked on the results scoreboard. Uh, forget to do that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and restart finish links one more time. Then we'll be all set to do some uh, real time results. Click OK. Close finish links. Open it one more time. Click OK. Cool. Now let's go ahead and pull up our sample meat, the Sheridan meat. And as we mark data in finish links, we'll watch it show up here in the meat. So uh, we and we can see here with this re recent updates that the updates that we've done are showing up in this list. So pretty cool. So in finish links. I'm going to go to an event, load my schedule, and I'm gonna to go to the girls 400 meter dash. Click okay, open it up. Now we see right here, right when I open that up, uh, we see a girls 400 meter dash varsity underneath a live events header. So I'll go ahead and click into that. And uh, this is showing us all the entries that currently exist here in finish links. And we've also got a, a zeroed out time because we haven't started the time yet. You also notice here that from this page, uh, you can take a look at compiled or by heat results, or also you know, maybe you're in the middle of a 20 heat event, you wanna go, you're on heat 12, you wanna see who's in heat 13, well you can click over to the heat sheets tab uh, and see that. And if we also uh, look for this event here in the top bar, we'll see that it's marked as live. So uh, these event statuses are always updating depending on what you're doing uh, at any time. So uh, I'll go ahead and start this. I'll grab my start sensor, click the button. We can see in finish links that the time has started and the time's also showing up here on the live site. And if you wanna take a look at this, uh, feel free, I'll put this link in the chat. Uh, let's see. 
or maybe I will not. <laughs> but uh, if you go to live.athletic.net slash meets slash 6035, you can see this on your screen as well. And uh, now let's go ahead and record some very, very fast 400 times. So open my camera, throw random shoe box in front of it to get some times. And as I mark these times in finish links, uh, let's go ahead and set that one to lane. Mark these times in finish links. You'll see that they appear uh, right there in finish links. It's actually, it looks like I made a, a slight error when I created my scoreboard. I'm not setting it to hundreds. So let me go back into my scoreboard. So we want to, of course, we want to uh, store the time in thousands, but we want it to show up in hundreds. So let me go ahead and set that to hundreds. So I just went into my scoreboard with down to time precision, change that to hundreds. And on the next mark I make, cool, they'll show up in hundreds there. So I'll go ahead and mark these. See as we're marking them, they're showing up. Cool. So we've marked everybody from this heat. We're all good. Let's go ahead and save it and head to the next heat. So uh, this changed to our entries, but if I click over to compiled, you can see that the results that we just marked are showing up here. So if you're in the middle of a, a long event, or maybe you've got three heats at 3,200 meters, uh, when everybody from that first heat's done and you got 40 minutes left of heats, um, people can still come and take a look and see what's been done. They don't have to wait till the end of the, end of the event to see those results. So let's go ahead and start another race here, and we'll do some even faster 400s. And as I click this, oops, I had it set to nothing instead of lane. So let me go ahead and delete that. Set it to lane over here. And I'll click on one. We can see that that person is now showing up at the top of the um, results, the compiled results. If I were to click back over to live, I see the live heat that's happening right now. Back to compiled, mark a few more of these. Oops. And now we're at 50 seconds, so I'll go ahead and make a few more. And you can see that these will appear in the middle of results as well. So I've got something here, it looks like 52 seconds. Of course, it's after that, so that's, that's all right. So we'll do seven and eight. They're the only normal 400 meter runners here. Those still appeared. Um, at the bottom of the compiled list. All right, so I'll save that. Head to the next event. And we'll see that on the live scoreboard, this is going to change to the next event, which is the boys 400 meter dash varsity. And we're gonna see that the status on this girls varsity race changes because it's no longer live. It changes to done. And then on the boys varsity, it's changed over to live. So if I go back to the girls varsity, we can see those live results that we had from finish links. We haven't touched high tech yet. This is all just coming from finish links. The idea being to get these results into the hands of your coaches and your athletes and your parents as fast as possible. So uh, what happens then when I upload these results from high tech? Let's go back into high tech. Uh, let's see, girls, four meter dash, pull those times in. I'll score it, hit F12, Let's go back to our meet, and we'll see here that just like when we uploaded heat by heat results from high tech, here in a second, these should parse, give it a second here, did I upload it? There we go. Okay, might have just taken a few seconds there. But now it's gone ahead, uh, letting us know that we're seeing final results instead of live results. And um, now we can see there's points for this event. And we can see uh, on the boys 400 that we're seeing entries. So from a, a real basic perspective, uh, we've seen how to create a meet in Athletic Live. We've seen 
how to send, how to configure high tech to send results to Athletic Live, and um, how to actually how to actually send that data. And then in finished links, we've seen how to configure scoreboards and how to send that data to Athletic Live. So you're getting the best of both worlds. Here you're getting uh, real time results from finished links. And then as soon as an event is done in finished links, you can then send up those final results with scores to Athletic Live. I encourage you. Uh, and I will go ahead and put this in the chat now that I have found out where the chat is. <laughs> uh, cool, just click that there. Um, feel free to browse here and uh, you'll see, and, and just take a look around. There's, there's a few things. So it looks like we've got just a couple more minutes here. So uh, if anybody has any questions and wants me to answer them on this webinar, feel free to add them to the chat or to the Q&A. Um, I can answer those. Um, but just a couple quick, uh, quick other things here to mention. So, um, of course, we're doing scores. So if you do go to scores, looks like we've had a couple girls varsity events. Uh, you can see those scores are here on Athletic Live, and uh, we also offer a score spreadsheet as well. So you can see that in the hundred and the four hundred, these these scores, uh, these are the scores um, for each event. So you can see like, hey, this team is in the lead because they were. Uh, pretty stacked in the 100, not so much in the 400. Um, and it looks like the pole ball didn't actually score. So that's why there's nothing showing there. But I do see a question here uh, about line labels. Um, how did the name show up in finish links when the lanes were red? Cool. Yeah, let's go ahead and score the pole ball. And then, uh, yeah, and then I'll jump in uh, and we'll go ahead and jump into line labels as soon as, as, soon as I score this pole ball. So let's go ahead and score the pole vault. We'll hit F12 to upload it. And then uh, let's see here. Let's go over and change my filter to the field schedule. And looks like they're not quite updated yet. We can go hang out on the home page, wait for that update to happen. If you're not hitting it right, got to hit it a little harder. <laughs> All right, cool. There it was. I was just being impatient. Uh, cool. So if I click here, we see that now we've got scores. Uh, looks like Gardner's got 10 points. Looks and Madison's got 13 points. So if I go back to scores, to my girls' varsity, uh, we can see that those pull vault scores are here now. So you can see that hey, this is a jumping school. Not so much going on in the sprints. Um, this is a fun spreadsheet to look at when you see that there's one school that, you know, scored 100 points in throws. <laughs> um, now, with regards to line labels, so I think the question was, how, how did the name show up in finish links when the lanes were red? Uh, cool, I think, yeah, Graham, thank you very much for that answer there. Um, yeah, so, and in, in, I think I've got, I think I, I know, I think I get the question. So, in, in finish links, um, so let me go ahead and start a race here. We'll go back to the live scoreboard. And uh, since I've got this set to lane, whenever I click, whenever I put the particular uh, lane number in here and click enter, that's going to mark that that given uh, that that given lane is at that particular time. And because in my scoreboard, go down here. I've elected to show uh, place and name, then that's always going to send the, the, the name and the place along with it. Um, if you don't have this, then the place never shows up until you click save. So the place will show up for like a half a second and then never again. So I'll go ahead here, just quickly do this, and then so three. Um, and we can see here that once we make a mark and have a final result, uh, we have a place here and then the lanes are still viewable here because while, while, um, uh, while, while the race is still in progress, you still want to know who number, you might, you might still want to know who number four is or who number five is. It's still important. It's just now that we have a place, excuse me, that place takes over the, the lane column here. Cool. 
All right, so that concludes this first uh, Learn Athletic Live webinar. And uh, we've got a few resources. So th these are links to everything that we talked about today, creating a meet, uh, uploading results from finish links, uploading running time from finish links. Um, this link will bring you to a list of all the webinars that we have coming up in the future. Uh, and our next webinar is Wednesday, May 3rd at 8 p.m. Uh, we'll be doing a lot more fun stuff with finish links, uh, showing how you can show live qualifiers, um, uh, going a little more in depth into compiled results, and then also taking a look at splits as well. Uh, so that being said, that's the end of the webinar, but I'm happy to stay on uh, now, and it looks like we've got some chats and some questions coming in, so I'll be happy to take a look at those. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys, and yes, th thank you all very much for joining. And it's a such a weird time to be talking track when we're not doing track, but I appreciate everybody coming today and uh, and uh, listening to uh, this talk on Athletic Live. Ah, yes, thank you. <laughs> This is the last thing I did before I started, so I typed this a little too quickly. Yeah, it's Wednesday, May 6th, not Wednesday, May 3rd. Uh, appreciate that, Mac. I'll go ahead and change that right now. And uh, we will go ahead and have this uh, video up and ready tomorrow. So if anybody wants to review anything or use this as a basis for getting your own meet set up, um, feel free to do so. And uh, if you need, uh, of course, we're not doing any meets right now, so you shouldn't be paying for any meets. So if you want uh, any free credits to try things out, please feel free to reach out to me, uh, ben at athletic.net. be happy to put some credits in your account so you can uh, try this out and start prepping for whenever our sport comes back. All right, thanks a bunch, everybody. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to me at ben at athletic.net. That's ben at athletic.net. Have a great rest of your evening and uh, hope to see you all next Wednesday, May 6th. <laughs>